really hot today. I'm working on the truck. And uh, so far, I've gotten all the trim work painted, all of the, the windows covered. And what I've just done is I've kind of trimmed the top here of the camper. The top is going to get this rubber roof coating that's um, waterproof. But around the edge here, where all the wires are taped up for the side markers, is going to get painted black trim like the windows. I decided that'd be an easier transition than going just directly from what's going to be the gray Herculiner into a white roof. So I'm going to just paint that black, that strip that you see that's taped, and that is going to be all black. So this is what I'm working on right now. Interior, as you've seen before, is done. I added a sink, uh, I'm putting in a new uh, skylight uh, and vent. And then we did do the cushions. Lastly, the um, bed is on its way. So uh, once the bed gets here, then I'll be able to do that uh, as well. And I also popped out this dent here. I just drilled a hole and then put something in there and tried to pull it out best of my ability. So I'll just patch it and then we'll just cover it over and at least it's not dented anymore. The plan for now, just gonna keep on cranking on this, show you guys some before and afters. But I'm going to get to spray in this trip. Of out with the old, in with the new. Um, we are putting Dicor, which is a rubber roof coating on top of the camper right. So you can see all the shiny white is what I just have done. And that was the old roof coating. Little, little yellow, little outdated. Around the vent, which I put in, it was really, really cracked. So this needed to happen. We are almost done. Looking really good up here. And it'll be for, from rain, water, snow, you name it. Anything that can, can get on top of this and try to puncture holes, this rubber roof coating does awesome at preventing that. Almost done. So I just had a guy come over, his name's Tyler, and he welded angle iron on the bottom of my camper so that I can get it high enough to get over uh, the edges of my bed. So this unit is only 20 inches tall and I needed more like 25. So he welded angle iron on three sides. Then we built a box underneath it so that it'll be stilted up. And as you can see underneath, we have a lot of metal supports and then the angle iron he welded into each support. Those supports are already on these campers, the ones in the middle, but the edges we did and just built a box. So now we have the height we need. So when we go in the truck, this section is 25 and a half instead of 20. And I need about 24 and a half. So it gives me an inch of play. And tomorrow, since this is all sanded now, which I just used a pneumatic sander, um, we will be getting on the coating, which is just basically a, um, it's a Herculiner, you know, bed liner. So we're going to coat this whole thing in bed liner. All right. So the time has come on the camper build to get everything cocked and ready for paint. Um, so far I've sanded the entire thing. So now I'm using a Dynaflex Ultra. It's a light gray, it's an exterior, it's got a lot of stretch resistance, and uh, it's not super expensive. I think it's like eight bucks a tube. But uh, we're gonna go around the entire camper and we are just gonna caulk every crook and cranny uh, that has like old sealant in it um, because we wanna make sure that when we paint it, everything stays sealed and the Herculiner is gonna dry really thick and strong. So it'll actually kind of almost like become a shell at that point. So uh, the best thing that you can do beforehand is get it really prepped for paint. Nice and clean. You can see that I pulled the paper off the windows. Everything is clean, clean, clean. And here's this side. So we are ready to go. I'm just going to caulk like these cracks. Caulk these cracks. Just make sure it's nice and seamless. Let's get you a time lapse going. Alright, so I just got
got done uh, doing all of the caulking around the camper. So now it's time for me to mix up some Bondo and fix some of these holes that could get patched. So I'm gonna Bondo those really quick and then just gonna let it all dry. And then hopefully by tonight, we can apply one whole coat of primer. So my goal is a little ambitious this morning. We got my dog, Georgia. Hi, Georgia. Hi, Georgia. And we are going to paint the camper. Now, today, my goal is actually to get all the coats on. So starting this morning with primer, it's a little past eight. So doing primer first, that should take about an hour and a half to dry. I can go run some errands, get some things done. And then it's really supposed to heat up. So once it starts to heat up, um, I will get the Herculiner on. Now the Herculiner is gonna go on in two coats and both coats have to go on within 24 hours. And you ideally don't want freezing temperatures. Tonight, we don't have those. So I may warm my garage before I roll this thing in and then see how long we can get for cure time. But I'm hoping to knock all of it out today. So let's see where things go. Um, last night, I did prime some of the galvanized metal uh, just so that um, some of the stuff is primed. So I did the corners here. I'm actually gonna try to leave the door trim alone. So I'm gonna leave all that um, galvanized as well as a few other pieces on the camper. So let's get to work, see how this goes. are putting on the Herculiner. We've got one side done, or almost done. And then we're trimming in this. It's kind of weird because you have to dab it. You can't really brush it like paint. So I've dabbed all that and then I'm gonna roll it and do all the creases. And then I'll come back with the roller in order to prevent the roller from drying out too quickly. So I'm gonna just continue on this side and hopefully we get this done soon. the entire first coat on as you can see came out really good the thing I don't know is this side was really thick and the first one that I did wasn't as thick so I think just when I go back the second time that just means I won't have quite the work to do on the others but you can see this one's pretty thin I was trying to dab it on pretty good but it stayed pretty thin so that it's still tacky. Let's see, that's yeah, still tacky too. So I don't want to put on another coat until it's done being tacky. It's got to be pretty dry to put on the next coat. So I thought I would get it all done before um, nighttime, but you can tell the sun's going down. So I might be putting the second coat on in the garage. That's where the camper's at. Came together pretty good. So we'll see what happens next, but uh, this is getting done today, one way or another. So I did end up getting the camper covered in two coats. This is without doing the bottom section. I was running out of gray, so I just decided to finish uh, all the sides with two coats. And then I bought a black Herculiner, and then I coated the bottom. So you can see now that's all sealed up and the undersides as well. And there's last couple pictures here. You can see I did the door, little spillage there on the propane door and the back door. On this truck camper, I'm out here in the garage. I just finished up my drawer system. So I had to elevate the truck camper so that the sides could clear my bed edges, um, bed rails. So I had to raise it about four inches. So what I did is I actually raised it about five and a half, and then I put a two by four drawer underneath. So this is the completed part of that. So this piece right here 
is kind of like a facing board. So I trimmed this one so that nothing would run into the bottom trim of the door. And then um, left this as it just kind of slides up against there. Got some carriage bolts to hold it together as well as there's two bolts for the handle. And then on the sides, I just did these little latch locks um, so that you can just turn and lock it so that nobody can get in there. But the thought is that I can use this for storage of the camper jacks for these guys. So also other things, trash bags, things that are flat, whatever. So those two locks are undone. And then you grab the big handle in the middle and you just pull and you have a giant drawer. So the only thing that I could potentially do is find a way to not have it hang like that. But I think in general, that's about as far as I want to pull it out anyway, maybe a little bit further, but um, that's the only downfall. I haven't really figured out a good way to keep it from doing that. But nice little drawer system, slides in and out super easy. And you can tell you got plenty of room for storage and other things under there. Thanks for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in more relatable content, you can check out these videos right here. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe down below so you can stay updated on our next adventures.